Hello everyone, this is Darwell20, and welcome to episode 87 of Darwell20's Let's Play series, where I just popped over to the nether to get a few mobs, because my, my, my liquid meat farm over here ran dry, which is bad times, right? Oh, not good. It's not good at all. And uh, my goal was to get it back up and running, because I'd like to use some of what's in there today uh, for some cool stuff I have planned. So I was peeking underground to remember how I set this up many episodes ago. And I do have an ender tank that's collecting liquid meat, which is cool. Uh, it's the brown, 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 or brown, white, white, actually. And then we've got the mechanical dirt here, because remember, mechanical dirt, unlike cursed earth from extra utilities too, actually needs some kind of source to, to, to generate mobs, right? So liquid meat on mechanical dirt equals make mobs. Without the liquid meat, no mob spawns happen. So my plan here is as follows. I'd like to, like to, um, get this farm running and keeping it running to generate the liquid meat that we need, right? So that's happening here. And then dump some liquid meat into the ender tank so that we can then uh, send that elsewhere to another mob farm that's going to play another role for generating mobs for a purpose. Anybody guess what that purpose is? It shouldn't be hard to guess. So that's the plan. However, before we can really do that, uh, we're going to need the Dagger of Sacrifice from Blood Magic, which is a tier two iron sword into 3000 LP uh, recipe. So in order to get that, what we're going to need to do uh, is pretty straightforward. We need to get some runes, some blank runes to get started, and then we'll probably do augmenting runes at some point. So blank runes from Blood Magic is how we upgrade our altar. So to, to see this, for those of you who may not have seen this process before, you can check out your blood altar situation, uh, and you can pop into the blood altar chapter, and it'll tell you how to work this. So a tier one blood altar is just the altar itself. A tier two, however, requires eight blood runes, so eight total runes, uh, around the altar. So it's around it, and then the block underneath it can be anything. It can be blank, or it can be whatever, right? So you don't have to worry about the block underneath it. And then that'll give you access to the Dagger of Sacrifice, which is cool times. And then eventually you want to get to a tier three blood altar, which has 28 total runes, which means 20 more than we had before. So it's five here, here, here and here. So that's 20 more in addition to the eight that we had for tier two. And then you also need some glowstone. And then you can eventually, you know, ramp up to some really much bigger ones. We'll get there when we get there. So first step is to make the blank, blank runes, which requires some blank slates, which requires some LP, right? So do we have any stored here in the, and we don't, I've used them all, that's fair. So what I'm gonna do real quick off camera is uh, get more blank slates, cause that ain't too bad. Shouldn't take too long. Um, and if we really wanted to do some cool things, we could, you know, maybe, just maybe, boop, boop. hello, hello rats, thank you for helping, zoop, zoop, it's super fun, zoop, zoop, <laughs> I could do that all day and just enjoy it. Um, so we realistically just need eight runes. Uh, how many, how much LP is left in here? We can do two more. Right, each rune is a thousand LP. So if we look now, we should be at eleven forty, right? Uh, so maybe I don't have to do this off camera. I was gonna do it off camera because I expected it to take a minute, but then it didn't. Nice. Yep. Sweet rats, you can chill there for a minute, right? I don't think they mind. And we'll come in here because I, I. So I have two options, right? We can either generate LP from self sacrifice like we've been doing, and there's ways to upgrade that so that we can get more LP per damage that we do to ourselves or or we can get lp from mobs we can kill mobs and generate life essence because we're basically you know using their life energy to to do magic so i want to go the mob route i was looking last episode to see if i can like kind of do some fun cheesy regeneration slash other options but i decided meh, meh. i don't think we need to do that so I did make one extra, I did do that on purpose. I just wanted to have an extra one in case. Uh, and that gets us the eight runes that we need, which I'm now going to place right like so. Oops. And if we check our altar, current tier is tier two. Booyah. Which means we can now, you know, do some fun tier two thingies, right? So we need to get 3000 LP and a sword, right? So I'm just gonna craft an iron sword real quick because I can. And we have to wait for the regeneration. 
<sighs> this is why I should have gotten a regen potion. It's going to take forever with our saturation problems that we have. I should solve those saturation problems, but instead I'm just going to sit here and wait for my health to regen. I'll be back in a minute when we have 3,000 LP, which will be about 10 to 20 seconds from now, but I figured that would be boring. All right, 3140, we put the sword in, zoop, and we get ourselves a fancy dagger of sacrifice. So how does this thing work, you ask? It's really quite simple. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Is something pushing me? Wandering trader? What? I mean, I guess technically you can <coughs> wander your way in here, but... <coughs> Should have dagger sacrificed him, shouldn't I? That would have been the smart thing to do. Just wasn't thinking. So they do have to be like right on top of the altar, I think, or very close to it when you sacrifice them. And since he was invisible, I'll use that as the excuse for why I didn't do that. But I guess he just felt like, hey, it would be fun to wander in here, huh? Let me try it with these guys, right? We can take uh, some mob imprisonment tool things going on. Um, let's see if I can dagger sacrifice them. Hmm? Ah. What do you mean, bad? Ah. Ah. No, no, ah. you you can go inside the mob imprisonment tool, I assure you. Ah. Okay, so that's the thing. We'll get some proper mobs in there in a second. You know what I could do? I could go pick up a mob from my mob farm. That should work. And I'll demonstrate how this works. It's really simple. You just uh, put a mob on the altar, and then you kill it with this sword. And the nice thing about it is, generally speaking, I don't know what I just picked up. Oh, a witch. Sweet. Uh, generally speaking, they should die in one hit. Nice. And you'll see that got us some LP. So we've got 761 at the moment. So let's go collect some more. And you can kind of get the idea of what my plans are for this. So I've got a uh, a zombie villager, right? And now we're at 1234. So that's not bad at all. Not bad at all. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to we're going to set up a automated way to get mobs here such that they can't move and then I can dagger of sacrifice them. I thought that would be fun, right? So I'm thinking we'll do um the mechanical dirt to spawn the mobs and then maybe push them with a fan into a portal similar to what we did with the wither and have the portal teleport to here so the mob farm doesn't have to be here the mob farm can be technically anywhere and that would be neat right and then we don't see the mob farm we just see mobs teleporting to us and then what i figured we would do is we'd have an on off switch of some kind so we could like flip a switch mobs will show up flip a switch they'll stop showing up and that could be cool um I, one thing we should probably do is claim these chunks so that we don't accidentally teleport a creeper in here and he blows up on us. Uh, I would want the, the mobs that show up. What is this? Oh, there's string here? How would that even happen? Uh, when the mobs show up, I want them to not be able to move. So, I mean, the most basic way of handling that would be to have slabs, right, and something. Because remember, there could be baby zombies. So we could have a one block call space, but then the baby zombie can run out of that. So there's that. Um... Is there any other way that we could apply some kind of can't move effect to the mobs in an area here so that they would be stuck and basically like can't move? I don't know. That would be neat to find. I'm going to have to look through the options that we have, um, whether it's like astral something or some kind of item or block or tool that can say, hey, any mobs in this area, like no AI or frozen or locked in place or something like that so that when they do teleport there they just stand there i think that would be much cooler than just building like some half slabs of stone around it because I, I, I always hate the way that looks you can put you can set it so that they teleport here and then just like build you know you know something like this um but i always hate how this looks i think it looks stupid right um so i'd like to find a way to do it without that and that would be cool worst case that's how we're gonna have to do it so there's something from Dark Utilities called an anchor plate. I don't know how this works, but we're going to find out. So blank plate from Dark Utilities, anchor plate. That looks interesting, right? Doesn't it look interesting? So let's go capture a mob and see what it does to it. So what I'd like to see is, hey, buddy zombie, are you just like, why do you look like you're just chilling there? What are you doing? 
at me, or are they like not really here? There's something funky with those zombies. I don't know what it is, and I'm very curious to find out. Alright, so I got a zombie villager. Yeah, I don't know what's up with those zombies. I have no idea. So, like, let's put an anchor plate here. Oh, look at that. Okay, cool. That's what it does to me. Hey, zombie, come here. Ha-ha! Ha-ha! So he can still hurt me, but he's definitely stuck in place. So that's kind of cool. Now, here's a follow-up question. How many... How many... How many mobs can be stuck in the same spot? That's a very important question. Now, I'd prefer... If I really had the option, I'd prefer no AI. Because that would prevent the mobs from doing anything, including hurt me and creepers exploding and that stuff. Now, because we did the whole, um, the whole bit with, with, with claiming the chunk, a creeper explosion shouldn't... Where did you go? What? How did he get... Where did he go? What happened to him? Come here, spider. Yeah, look at me. I'm a bad guy. Hit me. Come here. Over here. Nope. Yep. That, whoa. Cool. Oh, he can jump off it. Oh, that's a thing. I'm not sure if I love that. Not sure about that. So, how about this? The Medimon from Batania. The flower with the ability to completely halt a creature's movements. It converts mana into a powerful slowing field that halts any nearby non-player entities in their tracks. Hmm. That could be cool. Should we try this one out? I like this. Medimon, Medimon, Medimon. It's exactly the kind of thing I'm looking for. I'd love for it to be flower, floating flower, too, so that's even less impactful. I'm curious of its range, so we should probably get the... Did we make the thing from Batania that shows us the the, 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 the... the lens thing? Didn't we make that? Did we not make that? We might not have made that. It's possible we didn't make that. All right. Don't be derpy. Don't be derpy, UI. All right, so maybe we didn't make that. Uh, the, 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 this thing. The Mana Seer monocle. Just a little bit of Mana Glass is all we need. So we can see what the range of these, of the flower is, and that would be kind of cool. Now it would need Mana. So we're going to have to do something with Batania to generate mana to keep that in, 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 in line. But I think that's doable. I bet we could come up with something. I bet we could come up with something to keep that up and running all the time. That would be neat. And I'm curious also if it uses mana, like, all the time or if it only uses mana when it's freezing mobs. All questions that we're going to test out right now. So let's get a mana thingy from Batania pool. Cool. Uh, and then you needed two brown, two gray, a redstone root, and I believe that was the earth rune. Two brown, two gray. That's light gray, actually. Do we not have any mystical brown flowers? I might have used them for dye, didn't I? Yeah, that could be it. Let me go get some of them. All right, so we said you, you, you two, and you two, right? Yes, beautiful. Nice. Medumon. Now, to turn him into a floating version of him, because I like those, uh, we need the floating anything, right? So any floating is pasture seeds, dirt, and a glimmering flower, which is any flower with two glowstone. Okay. So I think the... Is it C? It's grass. It's grass that we need to do. Grass. Yeah, I need to get rid of this. And then you'll do that. So that's cool, right? And then we can do you, which can turn into a floating brown flower like so. 
And the cool thing about these flowers is they basically don't need to be on dirt. You can place them on anything, right? So I can put them anywhere in here and not worry about it needing dirt. So if I did that, right? Uh, so what I'd want is the mana pool, let's say here, and then we could put some mana in said pool by dropping this dude. And then we float this guy here. Now he is glimmering because he's got mana in him. So let's keep an eye on the mana real quick uh, using this guy. He's looking good. He's full of mana. That's cool, right? So what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to that so that he's empty. And now we can keep an eye on the mana on this thing. We can see he's bound to that pool because of the outline we get there. Now, if we have a mob in this area, first off, let's see with the monocle. Do I need that in my... Mana Seer's monocle. Can you go somewhere, please? I have no idea where you went. Oh, there you go. All right, cool. Oh, that's actually a really large area of effect. I like that. That's pretty good. So that means we can put this, I don't want to say anywhere in this room, but we can put it somewhere else and not worry about it. Uh, I don't know if it goes up and down. Uh, would, like, would it cover that? I don't think it does. It's probably the same Y level only. Uh, and if that's the case, we may need to move this up some to wherever we want the mobs to be. But let's go get a mob and see how that behaves. Deal? All right. Hello, weird baby mobs that don't die. How are you? Hello, zombie. My old friend. So what I'm gonna do is pop this zombie up here and see if he can walk. Oh, look, no, he does get captured. That's cool. So he can hit me but he can't move. That's kind of cool. Now I can only assume that your mana is dropping. I mean, it doesn't seem to be. It doesn't really seem to be, does it? That's kind of cool. That is super kind of neat, isn't it? Isn't it? So creepers will still explode in there. That's your only concern, right? Is creepers can still explode, but the mob protection stuff should make that not a big deal. Um, you know. Ha ha ha. I have pets. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Looks like it applies some like massive level of slowness to them, which is neat. Um, and I like that. I like that a lot, actually. I think that's really cool. So I can just put him there, and he is stuck. And I really like the fact that it's not using any mana, because that's extra super cool. Like if I remove this thing altogether, you're just still you're just still I'm full of mana. I'm good. I don't know if that's a bug or not. But I'm gonna I'm gonna enjoy that. Yeah. So remember they have to be they're not dying in one hit right now because they are not on top of the altar. So they do have to be pretty close to it. So that was close enough. That was also close enough. To within a block or two, I would say. Right? Um, that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. We should we should design where we want the mobs to appear. And then we should design where the, the, the medumon should be. And that's... I like that. I kind of like that a lot. All right. This is our plan. This is our play. This is what we're doing. Cool? Everybody happy? I hope so. Because that's that's the deal. Right? That's our, that's our plan. We're going to mob farm... Teleport mobs into this room. They will get stuck in a position that they land. They won't be able to move because of Metamune. And then we can dagger or sacrifice them at our leisure. And that sounds awesome. All right, so let's say for the sake of argument, I'm trying to think if there's any reason not to put this thing here. I think I think here's as fine a place as any, right? So we could have like, maybe like a three by three patch mechanical dirt or even a five by five or, or five by three. It doesn't super matter, right? And then what we could do is we could push the mobs into... Now, I want to make sure that whatever we're doing is not impacted by this. So that's a good reason to be careful, right? So maybe what we should have, we'll do this with portal frames. Whoops. Cool. And then you can have this bit. 
And I have to remember how this mod works a little bit because it's been a few minutes since I played with it. But we'll I remember there are some nuances. Oh, that's a plug. I wanted a point. One of these days I'll grab the right thing the first time. But not today. Okay, so you I would like to teleport. I'm thinking I want him to teleport right here. And I might move this a little bit. I can move him like over there, or I can move him over there, doesn't super matter. But for now, we'll do this. So if I were to take this guy, so I'm gonna remove home one, mob, spawn, save. Pretty sure that looks cool. Wormhole stabilized and activate. Uh, select target. Add, activate, sweet. Boom, that's what I'd wanna see. Cool, so mob touches portal, gets teleported right to this spot. All right, and then what we'll have is like something to push the mobs, so fans, kind of like we did over there. Uh, I know we have other fan options, and before we used the ones that were, you know, create-based. Uh, we do have other fans, right? I think, yeah. Cyclic fans. Let's use those so we don't have to set up a whole create system over here, right? And you know, we already saw this. We already saw the create fans. So we're gonna just, you know, cyclic fans. Okay. So what we're gonna have here, I don't know what the range of this is. All right? We're gonna have to just, you know, cover this up with a little bit of dirt. I'm not gonna worry about it. Too much at the moment but we'll have a fan oh look at that speed range nice now is that like x y like is that width or is that distance i don't know requires redstone sure lever please and probably while i'm here dirt so i can de de derp this Cool. All right. Now, hopefully, this is bright enough for you all to see. But if it's not, because we do need some semblance of darkness in here. Good. That's kind of good. That's exactly where I would want the darkness to be, because that's where the cursed earth is going to be. I think there's um, the feral flare lantern is lighting up this room, the one that's at my base, and this is probably the range that it can. So that's actually kind of really nice. Uh, so let's give him a lever. We. Nice. All right, cool. Now, if I'm over here, if I'm over here, so we're going to want a wall of of fans, right? So we're going to want five more fans, and we're going to want them all to be lever-based, right? Um, so let's get some more repeaters. Never hurts to have a few slabs around. And we'll want this to be one lever. I, I don't think I'm going to be turning these off ever. So what I'll probably uh, wind up doing is... Can I sneak and not be pushed by a fan? I can. I love that. Love that. What I will probably wind up doing is not having you redstone-controlled fans. Okay. And we'll do this and we'll do this. And then you guys can be always on, always on. This is the part where you're always on. Hello. 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 Okay, that's good. Cool. Uh, now, do I want to widen this portal a little bit? I'm feeling like the answer is yes. So why don't I do this? So that the whole floor here is this? Because uh, we don't want mobs to, like, stand here, right? Like, okay, cool, but no. So what we want is probably a few more portal frames. I don't know how many we need, but they're cheap. And what I'm going to do is break you guys. You might need the corners. I forget if you need the corners. I'm going to pretend you need the corners.
Cool. Why are you not absorbing cobblestone, by the way? I don't know. We'll figure it out later. All right. So wormhole stabilized. Activate. Oh, that's nice. So now you're over here. And then boom, you're over here. All right. Now, test with mob. Let's go pick up a mob or two. All right. Um, let me get some more of these capture guys. All right. Don't do that on no more. Which... Yeah, you give me another mob. I want three. Another zombie's fine. And theoretically, all mob types should work. Like, spiders shouldn't have a problem. Everything should be cool. All right? So I do this, this, and this. They spawn. And look, they're all doing exactly what you would want them to do. Yes, they can hurt me. But. You know. I'm assuming the witch can throw potions at me or something, right? Yeah, he totally. she totally can. Oh, I think we ran out of mana. Did we run out of mana or something? We might have. Maybe maybe the mana... No, it's still, it's still there. I don't know. We'll figure it out. I don't know. We'll figure it out. I'm sure it doesn't help that the mana ran out. I'm, I'm assuming that's what happened. Because, I mean, he's still sparkling. He says still full. Yeah, I might, I might, I might test that again. Just to see what up. Curious what an Enderman. Can an Enderman teleport? I have no idea. Creeper can probably blow up. I tried to get him, but I couldn't. I wouldn't mind testing a Creeper just to be sure that this goes well. I would expect it to. Yeah, skeletons will be able to shoot me, obviously. Yeah, I kind of want to see... Hey, I thought I had a... Do I have two Endermen? I do have two Endermen. Okay. Really like a creeper. Really like a creeper. Got him. Got a creeper. All right. So we'll we'll just test this. I think we're still within our chunk. Yeah, we're still within a within a claimed chunk, so we're good. Sweet. I think they pushed each other, but I don't think they can really move. Yeah, I know. Or maybe they kind of can. So he can totally blow up. He can teleport. It's not perfect. That's why I wanted no AI. That's really why I wanted no AI. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's still kind of cool. It's still kind of cool. I don't know that there's a better solution, to be honest with you. I'll see if I can find one. But that's still pretty good. Still pretty good. You also have to remember that, like, I'm going to be standing there and killing those things the moment they show up. And I'll probably even automate it so that, like, the moment they appear there, they also get killed. So that, that freezing flower thing doesn't need to last long. All right, so I think that's a pretty good wrapping up point for the episode. Uh, so we've got the core concept of what we want in place. And I think what we have is pretty cool. Right? Just, you know, mobs will, mobs will spawn here. So we'll come back next time. We'll turn this into a cursed earth mob farm so that the mobs spawn and get pushed. And then, like I said, we'll probably have some kind of, like, block here that's set with the Dagger of Sacrifice in hand swinging it. Because I think we can automate that. I think the Dagger of Sacrifice is not actually bound to a player. So it doesn't matter if a fake player uses it unless it's been coded specifically to prevent fake players from using it. In which case, we're going to have to deal with that as a possible situation that we will find. Uh, but we'll find out, right? For now, wrapping up point. So Daryl20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. We'll come back next time and have a little bit more fun with Blood Magic automating uh, LP generation, right? So more life points coming in. And then we'll progress through Blood Magic, right? Where we'll upgrade and we'll get access to some rituals and some cool stuff. And then we'll have better wood production so that we can have more nuclear reactor power and all the fun things that we want to go from there. All right, guys. For now, Daryl20 signing off. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Oh, cool, we're full. Take it easy.